they are for God's people. And uh, uh, Joseph just delights my heart. Remember, he even started crying. Uh, not this time when the father had died, but he started crying when he met his brothers for the second time. When they had come to look for food and there was a famine in his father's land. And he started crying. We call them the tears of Joseph. Why was Joseph crying? He wasn't crying because the brothers were hungry or the brothers who betrayed him had come. No. Joseph was crying because he was now seeing God's plan for him in his life. You now begin to see, oh my God, so this is what you planned for me. And I wasn't seeing it. The tears of Joseph. As he looked at his brothers and his younger brother particularly, he started crying. So God, you brought me, you allowed my brothers to, to throw me in the pit and to lie to my father I had died because you wanted me to come to Egypt to save them. I think the message is persevere in hope. If you have ever been discouraged, if your past keeps you up at night, the horrible things you did, if you struggle with finding good amid your pain, consider Joseph's story. Sold into slavery by his family, Joseph suffered many injustices over a span of years. Yet he shines as an example of not giving up hope. His words to the very brothers who maliciously sold him to slave traders Reveal his journey. Reveal three powerful truths about hope. So Joseph spoke the truth and did not sugarcoat it. Hope is not wishful thinking. It is grounded in the truth of a situation, yet underguarded by God's work behind the scenes. We may think that to exercise godly hope, we have to pretend hard didn't happen, but Joseph demonstrates the opposite. Yeah. Joseph spoke to God and God's fidelity, even in the middle of his many trials. His hope was in God. Joseph chose hope over despair, even as the situation grew, uh, grew bleak. And Joseph understood the heart of God to save many lives, not merely his. Uh, he dared to hope that his suffering meant something to the greater good of others. That's why Joseph was crying when his brothers came for the second time. He was seeing it and saying, so God, this was your plan. This was your plan that my suffering was meant for the greater good of others. So this is the prayer for us. Uh, this afternoon, evening in Kenya, here in the morning. Lord, in the middle of many trials, help me to exercise my hope muscle. Give me a new perspective on my situation, one beyond me. I want to trust in your work, even when I can't design what you are doing. Help me to move when you say move, to be still, when you say be still and to keep my hope always in you. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. So uh, the mindset of Joseph. What a wonderful uh, scripture. What a wonderful human being he turned out to be how I pray that we all have uh, the mind of Joseph and keep hope alive, even when things look to be at their worst in our lives. Um, so uh, thank you very much. I can see we are 38. So I would like us to start um, and... Uh, I, I really did not know where I want to start with this topic because 
ladies and gentlemen, this is this is what determines a researcher from a non-researcher. And um, I'll be hoping that uh, you'll give me some time, even when your exams are going on or are over, for me to really wrap up, to deal extensively with this chapter two and chapter three. Uh, because this is what makes the difference. This is the hidden secret in research. Those who can decipher the chapter of uh, literature review. Um, and uh, I, I would like to really hope that uh, we can get uh, this class a large proportion of you uh, appreciate what it means uh, to, to comprehend what a literature review is. And so I'm going to, today I'm going to uh, not rush because I want to get certain points through. Uh, but uh, Please don't be like people I have taught before or people you meet who think literature review is all a matter of copying and pasting material. I want you to challenge yourself to construct a literature review as per the expected standards and as you do that uh, you will notice your mind will start opening up in a manner you did not imagine and you begin to become a researcher you begin to to metamorphose you begin to 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 change from a tadpole to a frog Tadpole has a very long tail, and now you you begin to have become a frog, and so you can jump into the future with so much energy. You can get out of the water and go on the land, and come back to the water if you want. So um, I really wish I prayed about this, but I wish that we could pray that indeed all of us. Uh, hold the literature review chapter tenaciously and uh, uphold the sanctity of a literature review because that's the only time you are beginning to sit among the experts in your area. And it's your choice. You can choose not to sit among them, then you will never become or you sit among them, then you you metamorphose, you flourish, and you 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 jump into another space. Um, literature review actually allows you to digest all the material around your subject. And I began to see it in about two or three, four of you with uh, your engagement with you in your chapter ones. Just reading around introduction and background to the problem. I keep emphasizing introduction and background to the problem. You are not doing an introduction to chapter one. And I don't care how some people think, but you are giving us an introduction and background to the problem. That's why I want those seven studies around the area and around the problem. Those who have ears and listen will flourish. And I'm beginning to see some of you 
show signs of ambition to want to read around your subject area. So uh, what is the significance of literature review? What is the significance of literature review? So the problem the author or authors wanted to address or the main issue that warranted engaging in that inquiry. So you can't address that problem if you don't put significance to the literature review. The purpose of the primary study or non-empirical, non-primary study, secondary study, is all bring out the significance of the literature review. The research questions or issues that need to be addressed don't come from heaven. They come from extensively reading the literature review and then establishing your gap. It could be a knowledge gap. It could be a methodology gap. It could be a theoretical gap. It could be a practice gap. So that depends on you. Look here, the research methods, the research methods strategy to be used to address. You are not just going to imagine methods. You, you're not just going to imagine methods. You are going to pick them from your literature review. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not just imagine. They will come from the literature review. What methodology was, in, was used? And is it the one I want to use or I want to use a different one and establish a gap? The, the data collection procedure will come from your literature review. The data analysis, how do they do the data analysis? How about the findings? How are their findings relating to my findings? and the subsequent interpretation of the findings. I want to put it to you that those who will choose to punish themselves, in quotes, to mentally punish themselves and give significance for the, to the literature review will be those, will be the Josephs of this class. And when you start presenting your proposal, we will begin to see the difference. It will be so obvious, somebody who gave significance to the literature review and somebody who did not. Now, apart from the reasons for writing a literature review, and why do you write a literature review? Proof of knowledge. You bring out a publishable document and the identification of the research family. I like this one. Why do you do write a literature review? You want to identify with the research family. You want to be part of the people who have researched in that area and can be cited. How would you identify with this research family if you don't put significance to a literature review? It is not possible. And ladies and gentlemen, there are people now in Deista who are struggling with their proposal. They are, they are doing their PhD, but they are struggling with their proposal. And I have only one reason for them. They did not give significance to the literature review. So right from introduction and background to the problem, coming to the problem statement, running to the theoretical framework, 
and constructing the conceptual framework and then diving into the literature review, they can't do it because they never identified with the family, the research family in their area of study. And by the way, is it them doing that? No, that's what God does. Because you are actually trying to be arrogant, trying to be proud, lifting material, thinking you can find your way around it. God will resist you. So you struggle with your proposal. It's not, it's not, it's not, if, if you are a believer, you should be asking God, why am I struggling? Then God will tell you, but you did not give significance to the literature review. You did not listen. Uh, <laughs> I, I get mesmerized when I hear people arguing about the introduction and background to the problem. That just tells me your conceptualization of research is zero. Yes. And, and, and uh, if you don't have a teachable spirit, you'll have a problem. So apart from the reasons for writing a review, the scientific reasons for conducting a literature review are many. And uh, I quote Gal, Borg, and Gal. That should tell you there are two girls, probably man and wife, or man and son, or man and daughter, argue that the literature review plays a role in the following. And, and, and I want us to, to, to really pay attention. The first one, the literature review plays a role in delimiting the research problem. I hope that, that sounds familiar, delimiting the research problem. Remember the limitation? It is caused by you. It is the scope. So you see, when you read the literature review very wide around an area, like today, I am going to talk about chat GBT. When you read widely around an area, you begin to delimit where you will sit yourself. And that is the gap. That is what we are calling a gap in research. How do you delimit the research problem? How do you delimit the research problem? You delimit the research problem by reading it around the literature review. The purpose of a literature review is seeking new lines of inquiry. So you are seeking new lines of inquiry. And I don't know what those lines are. They could relate to methodology. They could relate to methodology. Yes. They could relate to knowledge. Knowledge, new knowledge. They could relate to theory. Yes. ETC. Yes. So you can you can you can choose to seek new lines of inquiry. And 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 we, we did this. It it could even relate to practice, remember? It can relate to practice. That's why you do a literature review, so that you begin to see new lines of inquiry. New lines of inquiry. And look at this one. It helps you avoiding fruitless approaches. I can't go in this direction. Here, studies have already done, have already been done. This one I'll not manage to do by quantitative methods. I can't do it by qualitative methods. 
I might have to do a mixed methods. So you avoid fruitless approaches because you have already extensively done research around that area. And, and I repeat, you are actually doing that because you have a strong introduction and background to the problem. Gaining methodological insights. Can I repeat to all of you that I would like to see many of you, I would like to see many of you use methodology as a gap in your studies. And even if you don't use it as a gap, I want you to read the methodology in the literature review so that as you go to write your chapter three, you already know the path you'll use. Maybe you are admiring the work of Pierce 2023 or Ayuro and Mugalo 2019. You'd admire the methodology. So you're going to follow that. And then identifying recommendations for further research. Yes, when you do the literature review, you will go and look at recommendations even before. Maybe you will find something to study. What did this author recommend for further studies? And then some of you, and I'm praying for many of you, that you become so strong that you are actually going to seek support for grounded theory. In other words, you'll have read so much literature around a phenomenon of poverty or development or policy failure in Africa or the bottom billion poverty in Africa that you're going to develop from that, from that literature, you are going to do a study that will, you look at observations of poverty in Kibera or uh, Korogosho or at uh, Shamaiko, and you're going to start from those observations. You're going to give us a model of economic em emancipation of the people in those areas. So I'm sending you through this as, as to why we do a literature review. And a good researcher in this class should be saying, my God, so there are many things that the literature review brings out. I must engage with it. Hart, 1998 contributes additional reasons for reviewing the literature. I'm just giving you the purpose for reviewing the literature. It is distinguishing what has been done from what needs to be done. I, I, I hope, uh, colleagues, you know that if nothing else, we do a sorry, we do a literature review to establish the gap distinguishing what has been done from what needs to be done, the gap. So how are you going to get the gap? Where, where? How are you going to get the gap if you don't do the literature review? Look at this, discovering important variables relative to the study. Do you know how beautiful that is? Because then you already are going to have a conceptual framework. That is the beauty. You're already going to have a conceptual framework. If you are able to discover important variables relevant to the topic, you are going to have a conceptual framework. And where did these variables come from? Where have they come from? They have come from your theoretical framework that you found in that study that you are reading. Synthesizing and gaining a new perspective. So if you really have mastered the literature review, it means you are going to become an authority on your own 
and you're going to give us alternatives for that study. You are going to give us alternatives. Those new perspectives are alternatives of approach to that study. Identifying relationships between ideas and practices. Ideas and practices. So very, very important. You will not be able to have to know how ideas are related to practices around poverty, around quality of education, around learning, around policy implementation, around business practices, if you have not read the literature. You won't. Establishing the context of the topic or problem. You must have a context. You, uh, what is a context? You must have a table to put your food on. So your food is your study. You must have a table. The context, the context of the topic or problem. Many of us, many of us try to, to go straight into the study without a context. Look at the context, background, situation, framework, milieu, environment, perspective, circumstance. You can't talk about a problem if you're not telling me the environment, the table upon which that study is sitting. And then rationalizing the significance of the problem. Remember, significance of the problem. Significance of the problem. What, what is significance? I hope my students in this class know that Airo is talking about consumerability. Consumerability. And if I was in a class, I would expect somebody to shout, Ayiro, you're also talking about the audience. Yeah. Who will partake? The significance of the study. How will it be a source of information? How will it be a source of information? Rational is the so what. So what rational tells us, so what if you don't do the study? People will perish, for example. Poverty will increase. But significance is who, who will partake of those findings. Enhancing and inquiring the subject vocabulary. I like this one, the subject vocabulary. Hey, and let us pause here. Enhancing and inquiring the subject vocabulary. You know, I struggle with people who have a master's or a PhD. And when I engage in conversation, they don't engage with the subject register. Huh? You see, even, even, even to use variables in their conversation, they'll start saying, you know, these things that affect, you know, this thing that if you move, if you do this, it will, it will, it will, it will try to affect the other one. You know, a learned person would just say the variables interplay in this area. Some of you, you because you don't engage with the literature review, you not enhance and acquire the subject vocabulary. You start saying, what is it? Is it methodology or is it methods? Is it methods? Once you start doing that, you have not enhanced and acquired the subject vocabulary. What was the, 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 the lecturer saying? Was he saying, what was he saying? Quantitative. Is quantitative, was he saying it is positivist? Was it positivist? Huh? 
and qualitative, what was it? Was it interpretivist or constructivist? What was it? But you know, when you have read four or five papers in that area, you will enhance the vocabulary and, and you are able to, to, to use the right vocabulary in your conversation as you write that thesis, as you talk to other people. So many of us have to really convince me <laughs> that you actually have a master's or a PhD. And, and you know why you have to convince me? You know why you have to convince me? It's because you have not enhanced and acquired the subject vocabulary, and it doesn't come from the ground. It comes by reading articles. So what is, what is leadership? A good student of leadership now in my class would be asking, is this transactional? Is this transformational? Is it instructional leadership? Or is it transcendental? You are able to engage with the language in a given area. Then understanding the structure of the subject. Uh, first of all, just research methods. I hope everybody in this class now understands the structure of research method. That this is chapter one. Introduction and background to the problem. And I will sing that until the cows come home. Because some cows don't want to come home. Problem of the statement. Purpose. Objectives, research questions, hypothesis. Yes. Limitation, delimitation. Significance, rationale. Conceptual framework. Theoretical framework. Introduction. Then we'll go and open it up in chapter two. You know, you know what, 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 what worries me is when I hear arguments like, but we can't have theoretical framework in chapter one. You know, when I hear such arguments, I, I worry about your research mind. Because you cannot, you cannot operationalize your variables if you have not pulled them from your literature on the theoretical framework. So as, as inevitably as you talk about variables, you must have had a mention of the theory. I was, I was, uh, I was one of you, Ngozi, was giving me a work on the theoretical framework for instructional leadership. And I was very impressed with what, what has come out. She now knows the theory that is behind instructional leadership by headmasters in schools. So how do they develop curriculum? How do they implement curriculum? How do they evaluate curriculum? There is a theory, there's a model. Now, it is impossible for this candidate, this student, to do a conceptual framework if she has not engaged with the theoretical framework. Then when we go to chapter two, like now we are in chapter two and, I, and I'm coming to it, there's a whole section on conceptual and theoretical framework. You will now expound and then tell us how you are deriving your study variables from that conceptual framework. So it, it will be pages and pages, two, three, four, five pages. But in chapter one, it is one or two pages. That is called threading in writing a thesis. Haven't we made the studies in introduction and background to the problem? Yes. Are the same problems recurring in the problem statement? Yes. Are they going to appear in the conceptual framework? Yes. So 
And when you do that over and over again, you enhance and acquire the subject vocabulary. Understanding the structure of the subject, I've just mentioned that. Relating ideas and theory to applications. My friend, whether you are doing a qualitative or a quantitative study, you will bump into theories. And the theories are actually the bridge that relates your ideas, your hypothesis to the applications. That's why I'll keep insisting that in our university, our number four, our, our research question, the last research question, we must be courageous enough to offer suggestions to address the problem. So strategies to overcome the predicament. Strategies to enhance instructional leadership in schools. Strategies to expand or to operationalize inclusive education. Strategies to enhance entrepreneurship in SMEs. Strategies to enhance a banking culture among our people. Strategies to ensure optimum implementation of policies. That's relating ideas to applications via theory. So that, that, that's, that's all I have done the last almost 40 minutes is to convince you about the significance and purpose. You know, you have to be convinced that you need ugali for energy and you need meat for growth or repair and you need milk for bones and teeth. Then you will take them without a problem. I want to pause there. Is there any, any, uh, I don't expect any reaction here, but I just wanted to pause if there are any reactions then if not i want to continue on with uh, what i expect of uh, this this very very important area and then i'll talk about why researchers review literature as uh, as we move on um Uh, let me share this. Yes. Uh, let me share this with you. And uh, this is this is uh, where I would like to spend also time. We have now talked about the significance. I'll be sending you those slides. Uh, the significance, Carol, take note of them, those slides, uh, the ones I've just finished with. Uh, and then I'll also send you this, uh, writing your dissertation. Uh, I don't know, I've not had questions from this class. I have not had people telling me, um, what is what is this thing called a dissertation? What What is this? A dissertation. What is this animal uh, called a dissertation? I've not had many, but um, uh, uh, please look it up because you need to know why I'm talking about a dissertation and not a thesis. And and me, I am maybe because of my training, I uh, uh, the American training. I'm used to dissertations, uh, but uh, maybe later on, at, as we get to chapter four, chapter five, I'll be telling you 
This looks more of a dissertation than a thesis, but I don't want to get there now. Now, the literature review, um, I'm hoping that uh, we we can construct chapters that will be live and related to our chapter one, related to our chapter three, related to our chapter four, and related to our chapter five. So the introduction or overview of the literature review we are advised that in this section, you, you first remind your readers about the problem and the purpose of the study. So I don't know why some of us are crying when they see a hero insisting on a conceptual and theoretical framework in chapter one. Why are we bringing problem and purpose here? And we already have it in chapter one. You see, this is the structure of a dissertation of a research. They are, not, they are not compartments that don't speak to each other. So you will remind your readers about the problem and purpose of the study. And then you share what should be expected in this literature review chapter, highlighting the main sections and or topics you'll be writing about. <laughs> And these are the key points for you, masters and doctoral researchers, when developing the overview. So there'll be introduction and overview. Chapter two is called literature review. So two zero literature review. Two one introduction and overview. And here, on the developing the overview, you will state the research problem or gap. You will state the purpose of the study, and then you'll provide an overview of what you plan to discuss in this chapter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ningependa Kuasi Sana, Kaunyanya Kevu, Pia Nawaomba. Ya kwamba mnisikize kwa makini na mujaribu kufata haya. It is so important to over communicate. It is so important to over communicate in a study. Because as you over-communicate, you begin to acquire and familiarize with the subject vocabulary. And anytime, anytime you, 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 you are going off track, you go back very quickly and ask my God, what is my research gap? Are you seeing why, are you seeing why the statement of the problem is critical? Because it is the mother, it is the it it gave birth to the gap, the gap that you will carry into your chapter two, into your chapter three, into your chapter four, collecting data. You'll have collected data in chapter three, chapter four in analyzing the data. You want to see whether the gap has been amplified and filled by the results of your study. And it is just important for you to constantly state the purpose of the study. Uh, I want to say this. And I don't know how many of you are able to... I can see some people having a problem with the... 
with connectivity, I, I, I hope they're just a minority. I, I want you to note this, ladies and gentlemen. When you hear somebody say this, state the research problem or gap under your overview. Because some of us will ask, what do I write in the overview? State the purpose of the study. And you're not going into details because you have already dealt with this in chapter one. So you're just making a concise reference to them. And then provide an overview because you just can't come with an overview without telling us the gap and the purpose. Provide an overview of what you plan to study in this chapter. I want, I want, and I, I, I'm not expecting answers here. But I don't know how many of you know this. And uh, please pick up pen, a pen. I want, I want you to write this down. Uh, pick a pen wherever you are and, and uh, take these notes down. The, the first section of the literature review chapter The first section of the literature review chapter, and you listen carefully, will 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 deal with will deal with just sorry will deal with um, literature. on the dependent variable or variables. So, uh, Ruth, if you are on the line, your dependent variable for you is this. This is your dependent variable, instructional leadership. So I'll expect you to tell us in the overview that I will deal with the definition, with the constructs of instructional leadership, the first section of the literature review. The second the second, sorry, the second section, and I hope everybody's writing, of the literature review will entail literature on IVs independent variables. The second section of the literature. Because in the, in the overview, you must tell us what will be, what are you going to discuss in this chapter? So in the first part of this chapter, I will deal with literature related to instructional leadership, which is my dependent variable. The second section of the literature review will entail literature, uh, and when I say will entail, will entail, maybe I should say, dealing. Dealing with, like that. The third section. The third section of the overview no, of the literature review chapter the literature review chapter will deal with the relationship 
between the DVs and the IVs. Sorry, and the IVs. So the third section of the literature review chapter will deal with the relationship between the dependent variables and the independent variables. So, for example, you know what is the relationship between instructional leadership, Ruth, what is the relationship between instructional leadership, which is your dependent variable, and the independent variables. What are the independent variables? What are the things that result in instructional, effective instructional leadership? So these ones could be things like this. Communication. 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 There could be things like individualized support. There could be uh, things like capacity development. C capacity development. There could be things like EQ, emotional intelligence of the principal. and relationships. There could be things like frequency of evaluation. Yeah, ETC. I don't know which ones you will pick in your study with your supervisor. Hey, I want people to wake up. Everybody will construct their literature review chapter in this format. The first part is literature related to your dependent variable. So if you are doing qualitative study and you are studying circumcision among the Bukusu in Western Kenya, you will talk to us, you will bring us literature on circumcision among different ethnic groups in Kenya. Then narrow it down to Bungoma. The independent variables. What are the independent variables around circumcision? What are the things that, that make us, people from Western, Adia, die, must to circumcision, cultural practices, pride, relationship building, and continuity of customs. Those are some of the IVs. So the second part of the literature will be dealing with those aspects. The third aspect will be how does circumcision, how is it influenced with the IVs? So how does communication, how does individualized support, how does motivation, by the way, there is motivation, instructional leadership, Motivation. How does motivation contribute to effective instructional leadership and therefore quality of education? So that is, you are packaging, you are giving us an overview. And then the last part in this chapter will be the fourth section. Deals with no, not this way. Let me say the fourth section will 
consist of the summary the summary of the chapter now when i talk about the summary of the chapter what am i saying i want you to bring me the studies you will bring out studies in section 1 in section 1 around the dv you will bring out studies sorry studies Studies in section two. I'm talking about the summary. Studies in section one, studies in section two, and the subsequent gap for your study. subsequent gap for your study. So that is uh, how I want you to construct your literature review. I, I, I don't want this blindness that is so common everywhere where <clears throat> we are saying, I'm now doing chapter two. The literature review. And me, I don't know what to put there. Now, I'm hoping that a bright student has seen this. This one. This one. The third section. The relationship between the IV and the DV. This section. I hope a bright student has known that this is where we are going to give the theoretical framework. Theoretical framework. and the conceptual framework. Yeah. I hope uh, you know that. But you see, I'm not worried about this because this is the overview. This is the overview. Now, when now you go and start dealing with section one in detail, section two, section three, when you reach the relationship, you can't build a relationship. Hey, you can't build a relationship without a bridge. And the bridge is your theoretical framework. And then you, as a researcher, will have your own conceptualization of the interplay of the variables and you will map them in your chapter two in detail. So those who wanted to sing, those who are feeling they can't dance in chapter one, now you can dance. You go and dance around your theoretical framework and conceptual framework and give us the pages that you want, as many pages as you want. But you must have, you must have alerted us that there is a dangerous corner ahead in chapter one. Are there any questions? I want to pause for a few minutes. Are there any questions? How did you like yes. Is that, was that to a Yes, this is because of course. Yeah. Uh, you are cutting, but go ahead. Let me see whether I can hear you. What were you saying? Uh, any other person? Any comment? Any any Eureka moment? Yes. Uh, uh, Ju Juliet Otiano? Yes, yeah. Juliet. Yes, Juliet. 
Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Just to ask, we are talking about the overview, what you've just explained right now. Yes. Uh, how, okay, allow me to ask this. Uh, how many pages or uh, what? Uh, how much am I supposed to write in this area as these sections have been divided? No, this overview can't go beyond two, two pages from 12. Huh? Okay. Yeah, yes, remember what I said, provide an overview. Look, provide an overview of what you plan to discuss in this chapter. To one. Yes. Yeah, but you see, it is very significant because now after you you have told us what will be in the first section, in the second section, in the third section, you are now simply going now to start with instructional leadership. Yeah? And now you do all the literature under instructional leadership. Now is when you generate your pages of your chapter two. Oh, oh so this one is just like a, a summary of what I'm going to talk about. Then after yes. that, I'll yes. now get then to now, each point. Yeah, very good. Okay. Very so good. How? I like bright kids like you. Obadia, that's a joke. Obadia Bahizire. Yeah, uh, good morning and good evening to uh, my colleagues. I have a very quick one from mm. the introduction. Uh, you uttered something that I took very personal mm. about um, uh, that literature review, it's not about a copy and pasting. It's not a copy and pasting event. On that, uh, I, would like, I would like you to expound on that, to expound yeah. on that. How yeah. do we fetch the, uh, uh, the literature review and um, endorse it or uh, um, and um, uh, adopt it in our, in, our, in our own work? Thank you. Very good. Very good. That's, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to That's why I've said uh, you'll forgive me. I know. By the way, uh, my class, you have two exams, uh, an exam on uh, research methods for your 30% marks. Uh, you know my exams are multiple choice, uh, very easy. You don't have to read; just walk in. And then uh, you'll have an exam on leadership, multiple choice, to to accompany the work you've done, the assignments and so on. I'll forget. But uh, uh, Obadia, very good question. And by the way, I don't know that you had. Can you repeat what you have just said, Obadia? Because that's what affects most students. Just repeat it. Uh, yes. Um, uh, in your words, you mentioned that um, uh, literature review, it's not about copy pasting. It's not a copy pasting event. Mm. Uh, the, the, so we would like to know more on how to handle, how to handle, how to handle that. Because I think that what, that is the business that we've been engaging in. Uh, yeah. Just maybe draw something from uh, whatever I've seen and you paste it the way it is mm. in, uh, in work. In your uh, work. How yeah. Do you do it? Yes. yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I, 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 I am. Um... That's a very intelligent. That means you're thinking. I want to tell the class this. We are going to spend some time, even today, I'm just about to start. Uh, I'll give you a topic and I'll show you how to write an overview. Then I will begin to tell you how to, to construct a literature review around it. The point is this, please, the literature review allows us to delimit the research problem. So when you go and read around instructional leadership, when you go and read around instructional leadership, if you followed what I said in chapter one, if your chapter one started with introduction and background to the problem, you will already know you'll have started to delimit the scope of the, of the studies. Now, when you're coming to your literature review, your problem statement will see those studies again, and you'll have told us the gap. When you come to your literature review, you bring up those studies, but you don't copy and paste. You read about that author, and you 
after you've read what they found out or what they wrote about, you simply write it in your own words. And where you are copying the exact words of that author, you cite the person or you quote and give the page. Just by citing the person, by, by copying and quoting the page, already you are deciphering that literature to fit your study. I want you to feel bad when you copy and paste a half a paragraph into your work unattended. I, I, I want you at a very personal level to scratch your conscience and say no. If you do that, and I want to assure you this, if you do that, by the time you finish writing chapter two, your mastery around that subject and your, what we are calling the subject vocabulary or subject register or knowledge around that subject will have just hit the roof and you'll never be the same again. You are wanting to become an authority. So I like the question and I want you to be patient. I go through a few sections so that you see how it comes out. Very good. Uh, but good question. Keep it up and keep asking me that question as we go through material. How have you done this? And, and it becomes our culture. We read, we decipher, and we, we write in our own words or we cite or we quote. Somebody else had put up their hand. Um, uh, I don't see the, the hands. Uh, they must have gone. Okay. Um, let, let's look at this. Let, let's look at this overview. An overview. Uh, where Kesa and the rest of you, you know, uh, people call it spoon feeding, eh? I've had people saying, but you are doing your master's or your PhD. You are not supposed to be shown this. Uh, I, I have very harsh words for those people. Because you'll only become after I have shown you how to become. If I don't show you how to become, you'll never become. You'll imagine you have become. But look at this example. This example of an overview. And I want us to pay attention. This is an example of an overview. So I hope I hope when I look at your chapter twos, uh, particularly those whom I'll supervise, I'll want to see your chapter two ordered around your DV, your IVs, the relationship, and a summary. And that will, that will constitute you. Now look at this overview. An example. Look at this overview. And this is about chat GPT. I was trying to, to, to get uh, this to come out. I hope it has come out the way I want. Um, and uh, I would like, um, Obadia, are you able to read? You, I saw you are clear, or Juliet or Tieno. I just want to be sure people who have a stable internet. Any of you? Okay, I can read, Prof. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go. So, Example what are you reading? Juliet, what are you reading? Because I want to be sure. What are you reading? Uh, an example of an overview, how it's to be done. Very good. Okay, go ahead. Example 20.1, overview. Although there have been conservations within the academic community about the use of chat GPT, an artificial intelligence chatbot, there was limited empirical evidence in support of how university faculty and graduate students view the util utilization of this AI tool and the concerns they have about it. That is the Agostino 2023. The purpose of the study was to examine 
how chat GTP can be used in the academic world and explore concerns associated with adopting this AI chatbot. In this chapter, I review relevant literature in relation to the topic of chat G GPT adaptation, use and concerns within the academic field. I started this review by describing where and how the literature was accessed. After describing the literature search strategies, detailed information about the conceptual framework and concepts related to chat GPT adoption and utilization literature were reviewed. Very good. So this was this is a chapter from my book, but you you say I uh, in this, where, where is that? Where did we have that? Uh, where it says in this chapter? Uh, uh, you, if you have understood what I'm saying, because I'm worried, instead of saying in this chapter, you'll say, you still say in this chapter, your chapter two, isn't it? Uh, in this literature review chapter, are you getting me? You will say, in this literature review chapter, uh, if somebody wants to call it spoon feeding, shall react it. In this literature review chapter, I review relevant re literature in relation to the topic of chat GPT adaptation, use and concerns within the academic field. I started this review by describing where and how the literature was assessed. And I'm going to show you, you must tell me the sources of your literature. I'm going to show you. And after describing the literature search strategies, detailed information about the conceptual framework and concepts related to chat GDP adaptation and utilization literature were reviewed. What I want you to ask yourself in this review, what is the dependent variable? So write somewhere, what is the dependent variable? And what are the independent variables? And what is the relationship? between chat GPT adoption and utilization? In fact, I've given you the answers. This is if you are study for this is this is if your study is on this chat G T. And and what are you what what is what is the outcome? What is the outcome? Huh? There is chat GPT adoption and utilization. So what what will accelerate that? Yeah. There was limited empirical evidence in support of how university faculty and graduate students view the utilization of this tool and the concerns they have about it. So the purpose of this study was to examine how chat GPT can be used in the academic world and explore concerns associated with adapting this AI chat chatbot. That's all. So this is enhanced utilization of chat GPT as our DV. So what are the concerns? Plagiarism. Eh? Laziness. I don't know. I don't know what are the concerns. Those, those would be the things that will impede the utilization. Um, can somebody 
read for us, somebody who is ready, just pick it up, notes about chat GPT. Notes about chat GPT. Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence powered chat system that is capable of responding to questions you ask or command stroke prompts you give, Atlas 2023. This chatbot uh, developed by OpenAI has been trained on a huge amount of information gathered from the internet. If an appropriate prompt is given, chat GPT can provide useful information, dramatically cutting the amount of time spent in getting similar information from conventional means. As Al Shatter 2022 puts it, it is trained on a large data set of human human conversations and can generate appropriate responses to questions and prompts given by users. It can also generate complete conversations on its own, making it a powerful tool for uh, NLP play. research. NLP research, page two. Yeah. Mm. Please go yeah. Um I I I want I want you to to learn something. So somebody was it Juliet? Juliet asked me how many pages will the overview be? Juliet, pages. Name Peter Moja Gwele. Yeah, um Peter Moja yon ya kwanza. Eh? Nime Peter. Page. Moja. Bado inaka inakaribia. Now yon ni ya kwanza. One. Mm. Sindio hiyo tu, imeisha. Overview. Si overview imeisha. <laughs> so what I what I don't want to hear from you, and listen, I don't want to hear things like, this chapter is related to the literature review of the study. And we shall uh, discuss aspects of chat GPT and how it is affecting learning in our universities in Kenya. And the full stop. Uh, you have no mastery of the language vocabulary in the area. You have not done enough literature review. Let's just go on a step further. A step further. And, and this is something I want to introduce again in Daystar, because when I read master's and doctoral thesis, nobody tells me the literature search and selection. I don't see it. I keep wondering, where are you getting your information from? How did you mine your data? How did you mine your information? Somebody pick this up. Literature search and selection. Literature search and selection. The literature search strategies section is where you present how and where you searched for literature related to your topic and selected relevant ones for your review. There are three main reasons why this section is very important. Firstly, as part of promoting the transparency of the study, you are expected to share the strategies you used to search for your appropriate literature for, for review. Secondly, it is a way of educating your, uh, your readers in the techniques used to search and select the right literature for your study. Lastly, sharing how you got the literature reviewed helps future researchers to replicate what you did if need be. Yes. Carry on. Main points and directions. These are the main key points that ma the master's and doctoral researcher should consider when writing the literature search and selection section in chapter two. 
point number one. Describe the databases you used to search for literature related to your topic. Point number two. State the search terms you, you used to search for the literature. Point number three. Share the criteria you used to select to, sel to select relevant literature for review. Yeah. Sasa, sasa hii mambo, hii mambo ya, hii mambo ya kuwa amofas, siju kwa kiswahili ni nini, kurundikizana. Ha? Maandishi yako ambapo hatuelewi, haya yalitoka wapi. Katika hii juhudi ya utafiti, inahitajika tuwe, na uwazi wazi tutoe uh, njia barabara ambayo tulifata ili kupata yale ambayo tunanakili i think it's very important literature search and selection you must tell us how you got your information and this is a this is a new thing i would like to emphasize in writing our chapter two in Daysta, then we shall be strong. Literature, search, and selection. How did you get your literature? Now, I just want to give you this example, and then we will pose for some questions and uh, clarifications as, as need be. So I want somebody to get ready to, to read us. Any anybody? Please pick it up, Jimmy Sanya. Thank you, Prof. Uh, literature search and selection. Yeah. At the time that I was searching for the literature review, Chat GPT had been released for public use for about three months. Due to this, due to this, there were a few databases that had literature relevant to my topic. I used the I, I used the Sage Journal and Eric databases to get access to the Chat GPT related literature. Besides the Google Scholar search engine, besides the besides the Google Scholar search engine was used to search for literature, including their resources. The following terms were used to access the articles: Chat GPT impact on education. Huh? No, no, no. Have you jumped? Not really. Just come. Besides, yeah, just, just repeat. Maybe I, I was absent minded. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Besides the besides, the Google Scholar search engine was used to search for the literature, including their sources. The following terms were used to access articles: Chat GPT impact on education, Chat GPT and research, and Chat GPT and education. To be selected as a part of the to be selected as a part of the review, the literature should touch on one of the following areas. One, role of chat GPT in promoting academic work. Two, functions of chat GPT. Three, meaning of chat GPT. Four, limitations of chat GPT. Five, benefits of chat GPT. And six, ethical Issues related to chat GPT. Pause, pause, Sanya, stop. This, if you are following from my overview, this is literature related to the outcome, the DV, the dependent variable. This is what you will start with. Hey, this is what you will start with. You have introduced some ghost code chat GPT. Please talk to us about it. You are doing instructional leadership. You are doing inclusive education. You are doing the conundrum to policy evolution. So talk about policy evolution. And, and these are the subtopics that will come in your literature review. That is how your chapter two is going to grow. 
But for heaven's sake, I want to know where did you get this information from? So there are many databases, EBSCO host, Eric, Sage, Emerald, Google Scholar. You must tell us how you searched and your search items. Your, I mean, the, the search terms that were used to access the articles. That tells me your maturity as a researcher. Whatever that means. So this is this is this is all literature on the dependent variable. Now there are the things that influence the use of this chat GBT, and we have been given notes. Chat GBT is not a monster. It is a tool, but how do we best use it? What variables are we going to deal with? And these are the things that will constitute our research questions and research objectives and hypothesis. That is called threading. Jimmy, carry on. In addition, I searched for literature that focused on studying or discussing the diffusion of innovation theory. The diffusion of innovations was a theory I used to, in, to develop the conceptual and theoretical framework for this study. The terms I used to search for the literature related to this theory were Rogers, diffusion of innovations, diffusion of innovations and technology, and diffusion of technology. Utilizing these such strategies helped in getting access to relevant literature to review. Very good. So, by the way, how did he how did he bump into the diffusion theory? The diffusion of innovation theory. How did he bump into it? He bumped into it by looking at the literature, the studies that had been done. And so he knew, oh, this is a theory that is that is pronounced here. They are not coming from anywhere. I mean, it is from the literature. That's why it is so significant to immerse yourself in several studies in the area you want to carry out research so that you join the family of researchers you look at the methods they're using, you look at the theories that are applicable in that area. And then how do you search for them? I would like to for you to give me the search terms that you used to get either in Google Scholar or EBSCO Host or Eric or Emiro, wherever you went, how did you get, how did you use it? So have you seen how theory comes in but this theory is not just popping up in chapter two, for heaven's sake. It is not just popping up in chapter two. No. You had already encountered it in chapter one. Now you can come and amplify it here. I want to pause there for some questions, if there are any, or not necessarily questions, comments. Where are we going? Where are people seeing us going? And uh, I am introducing literature, literature search and selection deliberately for reasons I have given here. And for reasons you will also give. And don't try to be blindly, uh, let me not say, just, just follow this format, and you'll come out with a chapter two that everybody will want to look at. Any comment, any observation?
Well, you can lift up your hand. Uh, there, I know there were some other comments, but uh, I don't know if there's- Can uh... you take some of the comments? Yeah, thank you for the tips on just embarking on drafting chapter two. That's Anne, maybe that's a PhD student. But um, I saw someone, Onchami, was that a, a comment or a question on, or you wanted to know what that means, or you're trying to answer someone? And then we had uh, a B Beatrice asking, Prof, um, do we have to write all that? i.e. processes, search, and selection. And then, uh, Prof, thank you so much for that. Is the first person pronoun used okay in thesis or dissertation writing? Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I want to... I want to ask, I also want to ask a question, which is all that? <laughs> because I'm trying to think, which is this all that? On literature search and selection, look at how much is written. Look at it, it starts uh, here, literature search and say it's not even a page. But you ask yourself, what is the value addition? What is the value proposition? How do we become different? And how do we educate other people who are reading our work? Yeah? That's, that, that, that's, that's the question I'm asking. In fact, you might think, you might be nervous if you really don't know the value of this. And then I ask, have we been taught how to search these engines by the library? Have we? That's the, I don't want answers. Yeah, so let's 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 choose to be to be fresh, to be different. Uh, uh, Julia, you raise your hand, please. Are you there? Mm. Julia, you've raised your hand. Do you want Maybe. to express a comment or ask a question, Julia? I've lowered your hand. If you want to ask, you can again raise it. Okay, it's okay, yeah. So any other, I know this is heavy lifting, <laughs> but uh, you're lucky because you're going to get all this material to go through. But you know, I am not going to baby. Julia, I think you can unmute yourself. We haven't, we haven't muted anyone. Just unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, allow me to continue, please, because of time. Uh, have you now seen conceptual theoretical framework? How it comes in? How are you going to position your conceptual and theoretical framework? After you have given me an overview of the study, you have given me the literature search, and selection criteria, and then you now come to the theoretical conception theoretical framework. Then after that, you now go into the various variables uh, of the study, the main, the DVs and the IVs, and then the summary. But I want us to, to look at this because I want you to model your chapter the way we are going here. Uh, 
So um, I don't know whether Missy, are you online or Eugene? Yes, Prof. I'm online. Yes, Prof. Okay, one of you start, then okay. you'll pick the next section. Somebody else will pick. Yeah, one of you. Yeah. Conceptual theoretical framework. I think that's what I'm reading. Yeah. The conceptual theoretical framework reflects a description of the theory, model, or concepts that inform your study. The framework for your study can be written in chapter one. However, some institutions or dissertation chairs stroke supervisors may ask you to expand what was written in chapter one by sharing and synthesizing academic authors and researchers. Researchers' views on the features, components, strengths, weakness, and or assumptions about the theory, model, or concepts you have selected for your study. In addition, you're expected to review how the selected theory, models, or concepts have been used by researchers if studies related to your framework have been done. Good. Carry on. Main points and directions. These are the main key points that the doctoral researcher should uh, consider when writing the conceptual stroke theoretical framework section in chapter two. One, state the theory, model, or concepts used in the development of the framework. Two, describe the originators of the theory, model, or concepts. Three, describe the characteristics of the theory, model, or concepts. Four, present the components of the theory or model. Five, describe the views and assertions of scholars and researchers in relation to the theory, model, or concepts. And uh, describe the studies done, if any, that utilize the theory, model, or concepts. Pause. You know, I can tell you as your lecturer, this is very common in a lecture world to tell you, you, mean, you, you have to look for a theory. You know, your study needs a theoretical framework. What am I telling you? If I just said that, what am I telling you? So here, at the expense of spoon feeding or, or, or giving too much, me, I think it is necessary because I, I struggled with this myself with my first, second, third, fourth, fifth master's and PhD degrees. That's why this book came out because I wanted to, to, to present a scenario where a student understands when I'm being asked to write a theoretical framework in chapter two, what is it? You have seen in chapter one, I want you to do a brief mention. But now in chapter two, I want you to expand it. But when I say, which theory are you using? You have not given me the, the, the theory you're using. What am I telling you? So these are the, the main points and directions. They are not conclusive. You can also ignore some aspects of them, but you must pick some of these aspects as you write your conceptual and theoretical framework, both at master's and doctoral research level. And forgive me, uh, these are notes. This, by the way, this is the first, I think this is my first master's class to teach uh, in Daystar. So, Normally, I, I, I teach the doctoral students. But imagine if today our master students know how to package a theory. What will happen when they go for PhD? It's a walkover. They know. You state the theory used in the development. You describe the originator of the theory. 
you describe the characteristics of the theory, you present the components of the theory, you describe the views and assertions of scholars and researchers in relation to the theory, what do they think of it, and then you give us the studies done that utilize the theory, and that's why you're using it yourself. So don't look at this and say, ah, this is too much work. No, this is, this is a roadmap. In fact, you just fill in, you just fill in, and you'll have a chapter two that you won't even believe it yourself. Carry on. Let's do this exam. Okay, example 20.3, conceptual stroke theoretical framework. The theory selected to... Remember, from... sorry, sorry, remember our study is still chat GPT. Still the same study. Carry on. Okay. The theory selected to inform this study was the diffusion of innovations, Daring and Cox, 2018. This theory was developed by Rogers, 2003. The diffusion of innovation theory explains how innovations are adapted and used by people over time. Pause. Notice that this theory was developed by Rogers in 2003. But this, this, this aspect, I looked at the latest use of this theory. Because chat GDP, chat GPT is a recent phenomenon. So I looked at a study that has been has used the diffusion of innovations theory latest. Maybe the others that the other studies that came out yesterday. But this is Deering and Cox 2018. So this is the one I selected to inform this study but it was developed by Rogers. So be, be careful about that. Carry on. Um, I'll pick it from the diffusion. The diffusion yeah. of innovation theory explains how innovations are adopted and used by people over time. In other words, the theory evolves around how new technologies are accepted and utilized over time. Sahin, 2006. Rogers' diffusion of innovations theory is the most appropriate for his investigating the adoption of technology in higher education and educational environments. Sahin, 2006, page 14. And you know it is page because we have used quotes. Yes. Okay. Similarly, the theory best informed this study because it focused on exploring the diffusion process of chat GPT within the academic world, examining the use of this AI chatbot among the university faculty and graduate students. Diffusion is how the information about and utilization of an innovation moves from the innovators of a technology to the end users, when yet 2002. Yeah. So, so look at this. What have we done? We have stated the theory used in the development. We have described the, you know, the originator of the theory. And we have described the characteristics of the theory. Yeah. Diffusion is how the information about and utilization of an innovation moves from the innovators of a technology to the end users. So what am I saying? If I had just told you, give us a theoretical framework, utandika nini. Now you know, this is what I'm expected to do when I'm packaging my conceptual and theoretical framework. So many of us get excited and say the theoretical conceptual theoretical framework will be in chapter two. But if you ask them, what do you want me to do? Students go and copy and paste. They would have copied and pasted Rogers blindly. Some things will pop up, yes, but it will be blindly and it will not be in relation. They will not even bring in chat GPT to contextualize how they're using that theory. 
So remember, this theory is about diffusion and innovation. We will not read this, but I want you to note. Now you can expand. You can tell us about this theory. So there is description of diffusion. Look at all that. There is description of innovation because it's about innovation, diffusion and innovation. And then characteristics of innovators or adapters. You now expand on that. And, uh, you know, you, I'm sure you know these things of early adapters, uh, late adapters, laggards, and so on. Then the environmental context, you now put it in your literature. This one, you have just talked about the theoretical framework. After this, and notice, even in this theoretical framework, we are not lost. We keep making reference. Look at this one. We keep making reference to chat GPT because that is what our study is all about. So here, similarly, as the innovators are shaping an artificial intelligence tool such as chat GPT, the invention is also changing the society, hence the need to explore the views of the potential users of this chat, of this artificial intelligence chat box. So these are the views of the users about chat GPT. So we are not just planting the theory of diffusion and innovation. No, we are relating it to our study. And now you can see, you can put in all the information, but not copying and pasting. Then after that, you now start your literature review. And uh, I cannot overemphasize the importance of following this framework when you are writing your literature review. I cannot overemphasize. And those of us who will follow this framework will find it very easy. You're just going to adapt this framework to your study. Of course, none of you or yeah, none of you is doing chat GPT. But if you follow this framework, you'll be able to know how to package your, your literature review. I want to pause there. Is there any question? And these notes, we shall send them. I'm going to uh, just go through them again and then send them over to you. And they'll be your Bible. This will be your Bible next to you as you are crafting your literature review. Have I done this? Have I done the overview? Uh, have, I, have I covered the overview? Look, I want you to start by saying, Introduction and overview. Have I covered the overview? Do I know what will be in my overview? Then the example there. You read this and then you relate it to your topic. And then literature search and selection. And then conceptual and theoretical framework. Tony, your hand is up. I'll take it up. Yes, Prof. Thanks for the... Uh great insights that you're sharing with us. There's a question that was asked before regarding the use of the first person point of view in a writing a research paper. Is it okay? Is it agreeable? No, no not, agreeable. not agreeable. I'm using this as teaching notes. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so please remember the thing. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Uh, um, any comment? Is somebody seeing okay. something? There are some questions there, but I don't. Um, yeah. and, uh, let, let's listen to Oloch okay. first. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Um, 
sometimes I feel intimidated with this course. Mm. And then sometimes also I feel like, oh, that's obvious. So mm. I am somewhere <laughs> in between there. But mm. uh, I will get through. Now, mm. at some point you were mentioning about chapter two and you talked about in chapter two, we will ask you to expand some elements in chapter from chapter one. Mm. And so it just came to my mind. Um, many times we are when we are writing abstract for con for conferences or uh, presentation of our uh, research, mm. I I kind of realize that there are a lot of elements of chapter one mm. in the abstract, at least the part of it, if you minus the yeah. results and the conclusion. Mm. Would you say that the abstract presents advisedly a kind of miniature chapter one? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. And and I have refused to talk about the abstract. Eh? Uh, okay. When mm -hmm. we finish chapter three, okay, I will give you a model abstract to put in your proposal before defense. And ah, that, that okay. miniature abstract will not have results. Because oh, we, are, okay. we, are, we are still at proposal. But ideally, we should write our abstract uh, when we have finished chapter five. Okay. It's, it's okay. like an ex executive summary, call it what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but again, the threading will be obvious. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other... Uh, question or, or observation uh, just just posing uh... prof i think someone has still persisted prof didn't address the question on whether the use of first person pronoun is allowed in research work this is an important issue to be cleared please kindly it is not i've just yeah. said you don't you don't use the first person huh yeah yeah I, I, I'm emphasizing that this these are notes. Yeah. But uh, you sh you should be able the researcher. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think that's that's. Uh, but it's good to get concerned. Yeah. What's the name of Prof's book? Where can I get it? A functional approach to it's online. <laughs> Research <laughs> methods. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's online. But I'm hoping that we can get the KLB version coming out. They are taking too long. They are too busy with the CBC books. But that will be much cheaper for students. So I'm pushing them. But you, you don't even need the book because you, the whole course has used the book. So you are very lucky. You have the notes, most of the notes. But it will, it will come out, yeah. Then there was a question on, is the exploration of the char characteristics of a theory chosen for a study the same with eliciting the tenets of a theory in a study. Yeah, I, um, I told you the theory drips the variables. If you have a leaking ceiling in the house, you'll imagine anguka kwa ceiling uko in anguka kwa theoretical framework. I love what drips out on the floor is your variables. So yeah, they come from there. All right. So, yeah, no other questions there. Okay. So, so allow me. Someone yeah. has put up a hand, but I don't know whether they put or it's just. Uh, Oloch, I can remove your hand. I guess you're done. Yeah. I can lower that. Oh, I am so sorry. That's a legacy hand. Okay. I've lowered. Okay. So, are we are we feeling uh, the class? And I don't want I don't want an answer, but. I hope we are feeling comfortable on how we shall make our theoretical conception and theoretical framework sit. Somebody has asked me what comes first. Obviously, it's the theoretical framework. But you know why I'm using this here? Something should tell you why I'm using conceptual theoretical because I know you have met it in chapter one. That's my assumption. Yeah. That's my assumption. 
Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, I I would like us to to get some thinking around the literature review, and uh, I want to do this in paragraphs, uh, almost spoon feeding, uh, but for reasons that uh, I know best in terms of really getting students to comprehend what all this is about so i want us to, i want us to look at and i'm going to send you notes up to the end of chapter 1 of the literature review and notice that the the framework i gave you up there you should be asking you you should be asking do i have literature on the dvs do i have literature on the ivs do i have literature on the relationship between dv and ivs and do I have a summary? But we haven't reached those ones. We're just starting now. But I also want you to, as a qualitative researcher, qualitative researcher, to know that although we don't need deal with IVs and DVs, we deal with the, the phenomenon. We deal with the what some people call the theses, the research theses. But when you go to the theory, you'll find some anchoring constructs in the phenomenon. So if it is poverty, there will be some anchoring phenomenon uh, that, that then constitutes the beacons or the variables of that qualitative study. If you are dealing with advocacy, if you are dealing with marginalization, if you are dealing with the uh, democracy, if you are dealing with uh, uh, things like uh, poverty, there are certain concepts that you will read in the literature and they'll keep coming up. And even conceptual framework, you not conceptual, theoretical framework, you'll find theoretical frameworks or models, maybe not theoretical framework, models being developed to guide the thinking around some of those constructs. So I would like, uh, Sindani, are you, are you able, do you have connectivity, Missouri? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Can you, can you take us, uh, take us up on uh, the review of literature? Okay. Have, yeah, yeah. Example 20.4, review of the literature. Because and, chat and, GPT, yeah, and Sindani, yes, everybody, sir. I'm not talking to Sindani, everybody, we are still, our topic was on chat GPT. So we are using this as an example. Down. Oh, we have finished okay. conceptual framework, theoretical. We are now coming to how we would construct our literature review. Okay. Okay, once again, example 20.4, review of the literature. Because ChatGPT was released for public use in November 2022, not, not a lot of empirical research has been done, Al Shatter 2022. However, there are positional papers or articles written about the adoption and impact of this AI tool in the academic world. Some of these articles were review, reviewed, which included the synthesizing scholars' observations, perspectives, arguments, and assertions. The review was organized under the following topics, roles and functions, benefits, limitations, and adoption of chat GPT. Equally important, a review on ethical issues related to chat GPT was also pre presented. Yeah. Roles and functions of chat GPT. So when you are writing your literature, that will be your first subtopic under the dependent variable chat GPT. Go ahead. Because the, Rose, look, yes. if you look here, the reviews were organized under the following roles and functions, benefits, limitations, and adoption. So now these become your subtopics. I hope you are following. These now become your subtopics 
of your literature review under the dependent variable. Carry on, sorry. Roles and functions of chat GPT. Exploring the unique functions of chat GPT, researchers and scholars are in agreement that it has a role to play in education and research. Evidently, Al Shatter 2022 asserted that the ability for chat GPT to make sense of language and give responses similar to what humans do make, do make it a great tool for assisting researchers. Specifically, Al Shatter 2022 further indicated that the AI tool could help researchers generate potential research questions for proposed studies and make sense of the data collected. In addition, Zai 2022, who was an aspiring researcher, shared that ChatGPT is seen as a useful research tool that can assist novice researchers to easily learn about research terms and best practices. Similarly, when highlighting the characteristics of ChatGPT, Zhang 2023 emphasized its efficiency, stating that it saves time when using the AI tool to brainstorm ideas and make sense of concepts. On the whole, ChatGPT can help promote research, teaching and learning, and it can be a useful tool for researchers, teachers and students. Kasneshi et al. 2023. Although the AI chatbot has a huge role to play in education, it will not, however, replace the jobs of educators. I'll charter 2022. All right. Thank you very much. So you see the first paragraph has covered role and functions and benefits. And then the second paragraph, which we are not going into, is the limitations of chat GPT. Limitations. So the second paragraph would then cover, in your literature, would cover the limitations. Uh and uh, you would have to go through it. Read the literature if you are doing this study and uh, write notes on it as shown up to the end. So this is on limitations of chat. Now, where is this coming from? By the way, where has this, 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 where are these topics coming from? It's from the literature. How have the authors, how have been this family of researchers, which aspects were they talking about anytime they talked about chat GPT? They talked about roles and functions of chat GPT. They talked about benefits. They talked about limitations and adoption of chat GPT. So that, that would have been my first paragraph. My second paragraph would have been on benefits. My third paragraph would have been limitations of chat GPT. Uh, and then as, as, as you go on, we'll come to benefits of chat GPT. Uh, we'll come to adoption of chat GPT. And we'll give you the, 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 the write-up. I mean, you, you do the write-up. And then you'll go to ethical issues related to chat GPT. And then you'll go to the summary of the literature on chat GPT. Then you'll be constructing your literature review chapter. And notice these are, these are just notes on, on the DV. Now I'll come to the notes on the IVs. Factors that enhance or inhibit, whatever the case is, depending on your study. Then I'll do relationship. Relationship, I'll go back and bring in the conceptual and theoretical framework. Then I'll do the summary. It sounds, sounds very nice, very easy, very nice. Very, very nice.
So I want to stop there because I have to leave uh, for a meeting. It will be it's, it's twelve thirty here, so I sit in Anusu. Uh, but I want you to comprehend what we have done today. So what I'm going to do uh, when I have time, and please be on standby, forgive me for ambushing you. It just depends on my schedule when I have time in the morning and I can I can carry on. I, I am going to look at uh, extracts, literature review extracts to fit in uh, on uh, to reinforce the understanding of crafting your chapter two. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and then uh, you are uh, ready to go. You are ready to to start uh, writing your chapter two. Yeah. Any questions? So I want I want to to I've used one example. I want to bring you some extracts from different examples of research on how chapter two is fashioned. But the bigger framework is DV's, IV's, relationship, conceptual, theoretical framework, and then summary and the gap. Yeah. Somebody asked what comes after the limitations. These are limitations within the DV, within the chat GPT. Uh, then you'll go to your IVs. So, Prof, I think uh, it would be interesting to know that uh, already we in the for the master's class, we already have some students who've already finished chapter one. Maybe once you've reviewed, then they can now move to chapter two. I think Osanya and yeah, and I want yeah, I want yeah. Thank yeah. you, Carol. I want to encourage my students, all of you. You know, all of you. I'm your first supervisor, the master's class. So I'm going to look at work, and when I'm here, uh, I'm not uh, worrying about contractors. Uh, you know, cement, you salaries, you what? I have time uh, in the evenings in my room. I'll be looking at this work and returning it very fast. So, Carol, can I have the topics that are not reviewed yet? Could I have the yes, chapter? Uh, yes, I have actually uh, shared with you uh, okay. the two completed chapter one on Chami and oh. Osanya, and then I will give a new. About 33 students hadn't finished uh, their review, but uh, about 23 have been able to submit, so I've sent you. Mm -hmm. And the other ones, the ones you've completed, the 18 ones are already now completed chapter one. So I expect by chapter, by next week, they'll be done. And then we can now have all chapter one completed, all of them. Good. Yeah, I, I know people ask um, sharing notes. Uh, um, uh, I would like to note, to note that uh, those who come in as PhD students and uh, master students from other disciplines, this usually is a class that is usually meant for <laughs> another class, uh, which we share our notes online using our portal so usually i don't send any notes on email because i send through the portal data online portal for the e-learning students so we can also encourage that there's also a youtube where we have numbered professor lebana euros lectures from one today is the 30th lecture uh, lecture on research methods and specific different topics you can also go and review those into also they can be helpful to you as you undertake this. But I cannot be able to commit to send notes to all students. I can only maintain the e-learning platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, Jimmy, yes, I, I, I have a purpose to spin uh, to spoon feed all of you uh, because I, I'm standing in as a fast supervisor. So I've got to make sure that you can, you have the guidelines. Uh, to get but let me tell you those who follow this format you'll have no problem uh caro is protecting her job i know she doesn't want to say it but finance would be on her head uh because the class is actually for the registered students but the phd students please continue attending feel encouraged and uh, as i promised when i get back uh we'll have some seminars with your supervisors and faculty 
uh, to support you because we are we are a family. We are one and the same thing. Yeah, we will. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you. Appreciation, Lavuna and uh, Ongaya and uh, Masi and Amisi, uh, Faith Amisi. We are in this together. We we'll want to see uh, a very strong uh, day star postgraduate programs. So I hope oh, you're seeing. Excuse me. Mm. Yeah. Okay, this is Faith. Yes. You can hear me. I can hear Faith. I want to talk on behalf of myself because I'm stuck. Yes. We have changed my topic severally, and I tried doing the last one that we were talking about the wellness, and I was not able. Then I changed my topic. I mm. submitted it to Magdalene so that you can review it, and I continue. I've tried to do some work, but I just mm. wanted the clearance of the topic so that I can combine my work, what I've done. No, don't. That's why. That's what we are saying. Just be assured, you'll start getting this. It just takes me two, three hours. I'll get those back to you. So okay. I'm up here. My way. Don't worry about that here. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh Nawatakia Kila Laheri. Uh keep Kenya safe and uh, all the best. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Prof. Have a very <laughs> wonderful afternoon. <laughs> okay, so, so, you, so we will we'll, we'll you, get bro. yeah. I want my students, all of you, not just the master's PhD, be available when we call you online. Uh we want to clean. The remaining part of literature review and how to write a summary and then we'll do chapter three and uh, we are ready to go all right all right people see you